Good evening and welcome to another edition of Mark's Inspiration. 1,674 of you wonderful subscribers here to listen to me. I'm blessed to have such a wonderful audience. Thank you for joining. Share this with a friend if you think it will be of value to them. <clears throat> Just met this guy the other night. I'm mentoring him and uh, we were supposed to meet uh, the next day or something and he told me that his wife or girlfriend got gotten COVID. And he was feeling kind of sick too. I said, oh, don't worry, you'll be okay. And he said, yeah, I've had it twice. He said, it's just like having a cold. Another person among many I have met that has had this and just got by fine. Now, although I did know two people that passed away, or at least I was told they had it and passed away. And the one was, as some of you know, 97 years old. And the other one was a friend of mine who was younger than me but had really ruined his lungs from partying in the early years. I miss him, but he understood why he was having problems. And he didn't, he didn't lie about it. He didn't deny why his health was bad. So my message today is don't be afraid, okay? If you're in good health, you don't have anything to worry about. If you're in bad health, if there's anything you can do to improve your health, because the healthier you are, the stronger your immune system is going to be. And it seems we've forgotten these days about health care. We put our health care in the hands of others, people who supposedly know better. How many of us can eat certain foods and someone else can't eat them? How do we know what we can eat that agrees with us and what doesn't agree with us? So we stay away from those foods. And most of us know what to eat to stay healthy, but few of us actually do that. Now, I'm not going to deny, I indulge in some things sometimes that aren't good for me. I love Pop-Tarts. I don't eat them very often, but I've been told that they're banned in some countries because I guess there's something in there that probably isn't too good for you. So I eat them maybe once a year. And actually the last time I ate them because I haven't been eating sugar, they were just too sweet. You'll find out if you lay off the sugar as much as possible because almost everything has sugar in it. Even my organic peas has sugar in it. Um, you, you'll find that you don't have the desire for it and your taste buds get to where you can actually enjoy the taste of things that other people are think very are very bland. But by eating correctly, exercising, and taking care of yourself, reducing whatever weight, if you have excess weight, this strengthens your immune system. And that is your best health care, we'll say, protector. So instead of running to the doctor every time you get the sniffles or a cold to try to get a pill to fix that ill, why don't you do some preventative medicine and take care of yourself? I mean, in the U.S., we have a 75 to 80 percent obese or overweight problem. That's the stats. The average American woman weighs 172 pounds. There's a problem there. And the average American man, I don't know, but he's probably up there too. So obviously if you're carrying too much weight, that's not healthy. Regardless of what some of the narrative is that we're all beautiful and we're all healthy and everything's just perfect. Well, that's not true. I remember back when I was overweight, I hated it, man. I weighed 184 pounds. When I would run, my legs would rub together. Now, I'm almost six foot tall, five, ten and a half, or five eleven, and uh, I weigh about one fifty seven. The other day, I weigh one fifty seven. Now, I like to be about one fifty four. Depends on how much muscle I have on, but right now, one fifty four, even fifty three or fifty two, I get a real good cut. And I run, and I lift weights, and I work hard when I'm busy. I'm not real busy right now. So I stay in good shape. And the reason I'm telling you this is no matter what age you are, I'm 62, you can get in shape. And studies are showing now that vigorous exercise helps you live longer. Now, if you're like really overweight, and you think, God, I can't do that. I can barely walk up the steps. That's fine. Here's what you do. Tomorrow, walk up the steps and then walk down and walk back up one more time. The next day, do it the same. Two days later, do one more. And you can build yourself up like that and eat one less bite. Don't go on a diet. I mean, it works for some people, but it doesn't work for very many because you gain that weight back and more. I've done it, other people have done it, but just start eating one less bite. 
instead of having that candy bar, find some fruit that you really enjoy and eat that. And get up from the table. And also, when you're eating, put a bite in your mouth and put the fork down, chew that up and, and swallow it. Now these seem like simple things that will make a difference, but over a period of time you develop good eating habits. Don't try to do it overnight. If you're eating junk food three times a day at every meal, don't try to cut it all out all at once unless you think you can. Just start cutting back on it at every meal. I used to have to have something sweet at every meal. These little steps, I think there's a principle that the Japanese use called Kaizen. It's small incremental improvements over a period of time makes a big difference. You didn't gain that weight overnight, did you? You didn't get out of shape overnight, did you? It was over a period of time with bad habits that you built up the extra pounds. And this is the same way you can get it off and keep it off and be healthy and you won't have to run to the doctor every time you get sick. Now, I'm not anti-doctor. I go to the doctor when I need to. I mean, I broke my shoulder, I, I've gone. I had this vertigo, so there's, sometimes it gets so bad that I've gone and they give me some, like a steroid pack and it dries up that fluid in my head. But the last time I had it, I probably had it for about a month off and on from breathing dust, I, I didn't go. For one reason, the waiting, it was a long wait to get in there and then I thought, man, I'm just gonna see if I can get through this, which I did. I was a little dizzy here and there and it was kind of uncomfortable, but I managed to make it. Okay, I don't like taking any kind of medication because there's side effects to every medicine. As we can see in this latest two years or three years of this big crisis or this uh, supposed crisis we had, we come up with a cure for it and many people are, are not doing too well after they took the cure. So whether you did or whether you didn't, that's your business. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just telling you what I'm seeing reported in Congress and uh, some of the uh, people that uh, are looking into it. So there's a risk in everything you do. Did the risk outweigh the rewards? Well, time will tell, that's for sure. But back to my original topic, take care of yourself. I've told you guys this before, I drive by the car wash most people take better care of their cars than they do their bodies. Would you think of putting bad gasoline in your car? Of course you wouldn't. And if you did, if you had to, and it didn't run well, you would understand why. Well, if your body's not running well, if it's not at optimal levels, what kind of gas, i.e. food, are you putting into your body? Fast food two or three nights a week, or every night, three times a day? Anything you get at the food, the gas stations, there's nothing in there that's good for you. I don't think maybe a, a carton of milk or orange juice. But other than that, even the protein bars, I believe are nothing more than a glorified candy bar. And I used to eat those quite a bit. I mean, it's probably better than a candy bar, but I'm not really sure how your body assimilates that extra protein they say that's in there. So you wanna stay away from that. If you can afford it, eat organic food. I know it's expensive but it's like pay now or pay, lady at, pay, pay later at the doctor or for your health later on down the road. I'm 62, I don't take any medications. If I had to, I would. I don't go to the doctor for a checkup every year. I'm not saying, I'm not advising you to not do that or to do do it, but if it's not broke, don't fix it. Let me give you one example. I apologize for the interruption, but with six kids here, they come knocking on the door and I didn't tell them I was making a video, so. Back to the topic, where was I? Uh, I think I was talking about not being anti-doctor, maybe. I may have lost my spot, but I'm gonna wrap it up anyway. Doctors are great, we need them sometimes. But if you can take care of yourself and just build your immune system up by eating right, exercising, meditation, prayer if you're a religious person or if you believe in God or a higher power, all these things, and think positively. Don't criticize, don't gossip or complain. All these things are poison to your system. They're starting to discover that a lot of heart attacks, cancer, and different things like this are caused by resentment, by anger. So remember that if you're, anger, it's, if you're anger, angry at someone else, it's like a poison in you. Rheumatoid arthritis, these things are caused by resentment and long-held angers. I have some of that myself right now and I know exactly why it's there. <laughs> um, sometimes it's hard. 
I mean, I'm not currently holding any anger toward anybody, but there have been times when I've been angry, how do I say, sub within myself and not realizing it. And that's the strange thing about resentment or anger is sometimes you can be resentful or angry and not even realize it. But when you start having problems in your body, you really start have to look at yourself. Because whatever medicine they give you, that just takes care of the symptom. The underlying problem is causing the symptom of pain, inflammation. Inflammation comes from anger built up and stored up over a long period of time. It could be from your parents. I know I discovered I was very angry at my parents at about 32 or 33 years old, and I didn't even know it. But I happened to go back to the house I grew up in, and it brought back a lot of old memories. And I was able to get that out to express, and not to them, but to express those feelings to, to emotion. How would I say? To emote those feelings that I stuffed away a long time ago. And then I had to realize mom and dad did the best they could, which was pretty damn good now that I'm a parent and I have kids and see how it is to raise them. So, But all these things are inside of us. And that's one of the issues I have with doctors. When we go there, they don't take enough time to find out what's going on in your life. They just discover what the symptom is. They ask you a couple questions, usually about physical. They don't even ask you what you eat, what your diet is, when you go to sleep, what your exercise regimen is, none of that. At least I've never been asked that. And then they prescribe a medicine to deal with the symptom. But the problem is something much deeper and you can't discover that in five minutes. I mean, doctors need to spend probably at least 20 minutes to a half an hour with you just to, to find out what's going on in your life. But it's about making money and I'm not bad mouthing doctors. I got a nurse practitioner I go to and I've had a doctors that are really good people. The last doctor we went to that gave, uh, he did a uh, little small operation on my son, Kevin, he was really good. And he talked to him and spent time with him. And so, and actually he didn't have to because it was obvious what the problem was there. That was something that uh, come on, he got a cold and got sick and got a sore throat and it turned into a cyst and they had to drain it. So all these things are, are, are important. And really, like I said, being your own healthcare provider you can provide more health care to yourself than anybody else really can because it begins with you. So that's all I have for tonight. If you would like to get my help personally, marksinspiration.com is my website, or you can contact me directly at marksinspirationalguidance at gmail.com. Thank you for being here. You're the best. Take care.